Hi guys, welcome to this grasshopper tutorial of the Fjorn Hose. I'm sure I butchered that name. Today we're gonna go over how to build the basic forms, do some Boolean operations, learn some surface building, and go over one of my favorite components, the geometry pipeline. So let's get started. All right, let's begin. So here I have a just a bunch of points that are going to be the centers of these circles. So I'm just gonna do the circle command, put that in there, and let's say I want about 30,000 for the radius. That's about 30 meters. And this is the kind of shape we get. And of course, I can edit this as I need. So let's go down a bit. Yeah, okay. And now you can combine these together just to make one curve. That's the boundary of these regions. So you can say region. And you see region union. Go ahead and do that. And you'll see that now we have that border. And of course, I can move the points around and we can edit that shape as necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and extrude this up. All right, use that as my base. The direction is straight up, so in the Z direction. And we're gonna go, I'm gonna copy this here and let's say we go about 35,000. Let's see what that gives us. Yeah, so that's a decent amount of height for the building. Now let's go ahead and cap those ends off because we don't necessarily want to have an open surface. We want a closed poly surface because we're going to do a Boolean operation. And so far, that's the surface we're going to use. Now, the next step is to figure out how we're going to go ahead and carve out of this. So I'm going to go to another layer here, my paraboloid guides, and just create a vertical line. All right, bring that line in here. So just curves and I'm going to call this a paraboloid center line. Always good to label as you go so you don't get confused. Set one curve now recognizes that curve. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go to the base of this and draw a curve. So evaluate curve and go ahead and set the parameter to zero. Now doing this will of course give me the base of the curve, which is right there. And I can go ahead and draw a circle, another one on this base, except this time I'm going to have the ra radius as a function of the height. So if I type in length and get the length of this center line, then what I can do is take that length and let's say divide it by 10, and that will be my radius. So of course, if I change the height, of this curve. If I make it taller, that radius gets bigger, and so it's parametric. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to need some type of parabola that's going around here so that I can then revolve it and make a solid surface. So in order to do that, let's, let's get three points to draw a NURBS curve, all right? So again, I'm going to use the evaluate curve component again, and this time I'm going to enter 0 and 0 0.5 as two values. And of course, whenever you're using these type of values, you make sure you reparameterize your curve. And you'll see that I have two points here. And now we need a third point that is basically this endpoint right here, this point on top. So remember how we got the base point for that curve? We're going to just copy and paste that down here and just use that to get the point on top as well. So of course, reparameterize this and I have the point on top. Now, I need to merge these points together and then put that merged result into a NURBS curve. So, and be, there we go, can't spell today, but there we go, NURBS surface, vertices, one, two, three points. So we already know the middle point is gonna be this point on top. I'm going to take that and put that in the middle as a center point here. However, I need the first and last points to be these ones on the circle. So I can use the list item component. And of course, I can go ahead and hit a plus sign. So now I have the first item and the item after. And I can put those as the first point and the last point for the parabola. And you see that I have a parabola here. Actually, I want to control the height a little better. So instead of this, I'm going to use interpolate. Uh, there we go. Interpolate instead. And that'll keep it a lot tighter to the points I need. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Keep this curve. Now, 
If you do a revolve component with a curve like this, it's gonna be a little bit of a messy surface. So really, I only need half of this curve. And the easiest way to do that is to break this curve into two pieces. I'm gonna use the shatter component, love this component. Curve, right click, reparameterize this so we can split it right in the middle, which is halfway down the curve at 0 0.5. Plug that in. And if I start hiding some of these, you'll start to see that we have just half of this curve selected. There, if I do a list item and just pull out the first item in that list, you'll see that it's just half of the curve. Now we can go ahead and revolve this. So if I do revolution, now ask for curve, axis, and domain. The curve we already know is this curve that we just found. The axis is going to be the line, this vertical line here. So I can go ahead, go back, find the center line, and bring that over and use that as my axis. And the domain, if I hover over it, it says 0 to 2 pi, or 360 degrees, which is just fine for us. And you can see that I get a pretty nice solid there. If you're not seeing the display properly, make sure you adjust this, make sure this is a high quality display. Now, one thing I like to do is instead of looking at it this way, I like to preview my components a little bit differently so that they are better visible for me. Now I'm going to use this and just change the color of the face. Make this a little bit uh, blue, I guess, and just very, very light. So it's almost like a little shadow. And of course, as I move this around, it's going to you know, update the location of the parabola. Now, if I put this really close to our solid, let's see if we can start and you know, break the solid using this form. Now, there is a component we can use to do that. And if you go up here under intersect, under shape, you'll see that we have a solid difference component. I can bring that component in and here we have the main form that we want to remove from and the forms that we're going to use to remove some mass out of that. And we're going to use this surface here. And you see we have another result. It's kind of hard to see, so I'm going to go ahead and hide the original surface. And we will see if we can preview. Again, copy the preview components. Again, if you don't have these components, just click the link on the screen. And you should be able to download them for free, of course there. Now, if I hide this, you'll see that it's actually sliced away a portion of that solid. And I can move this around and you'll see that it updates as necessary. Now, say I want more than one, right? Say I want two of these. So I'll go ahead and use the Alt command and copy another line here. Now go back to the beginning. Now every time I have something with a bunch of components and I want to add more than one element to a, you know, a series of components that's generally just use one input. I'm going to go ahead and disable everything here. Control E is what I use as a shortcut. Just disable all this. And what this allows me to do is really control and make sure that the lists work properly. Uh, so if I do select multiple curves now, go ahead and select these two, then I can make sure that every time I'm going through the script that I'm kind of keeping an eye out on the different elements and what's happening here. So for example, here you have four points. Really, what I need is two sets of uh, three points, right? So what is wrong over here? Well, here we need to graph this curve. Okay, so we get yeah, two points each. There we go. And down here, we need to make sure that this curve also gets grafted. Now let's see what our results looks like there. That's a lot better. Okay, go ahead. We should have two curves here and split them into four pieces and get the first item there. Okay, this axis also will need to be grafted to get two surfaces. All right, perfect. Okay, now that that's done, let's see if this component works. Uh, it does, but I believe we have a double and that's because this has two sets of data coming into it. You see there's two branches. Just make sure we flatten that and we should be just fine. Okay, so there we go. Now, say you wanted to add a whole bunch more, right? Like we had several more lines to add. Now, each time if I created one of these lines, I don't want to necessarily go in and manually change everything, right? I want to be able to just bring them in automatically. And so we're going to use one of my favorite components. It's called a geometry pipeline. Okay, and all you need to do is enter the layer 
Okay, so I'm going to copy the layer name here, double click, paste, and the type of geometry you're trying to pull. Here I'm trying to pull curves, so I'll double click on that, and you'll see that all I'm getting is a bunch of curves. And the more curves I add, so right now I read six curves, if I start adding some more, you see that it automatically updates. It saves me from going ahead and referencing them each time. I can go ahead, bring this up here, and now it's going to reference all of them. Now, the great thing about this is, of course, I can change the scales, right? And it should update on the model. And what you can also do is just take one of these and if you flip it upside down 180 degrees, you see that it's going the other way. And so what this will allow us to do is to make all those cuts in different directions, right? So if I go ahead, hide these and start hiding some of those, you know, points and things you don't need and just make a much cleaner diagram here. All right, there we go. That's a much, much better result. And you can keep pushing this further. And you may even get something like this, which is quite close to what we're seeing over here in the image. So I hope this tutorial helped you guys out and you learn a couple of new things. Remember to download the components from the link on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.